This is the first preview of Android 14 aka Android Upside Down Cake running on the Pixel 7 and I'm going to show you the big changes and features in this brand new Android update. So let's go. So the first thing Android 14 is improving is battery life. First of all, Android 14 has been optimized to make sure the system takes less power from unneeded processes and apps. Plus, the battery page in Android 14 has been kind of streamlined. Screen on time, which was removed in stock Android, is back in Android 14. The battery saver page now shows you the two different battery savers, the basic battery saver and the extreme one. There's also a new schedule and reminder page where you can turn on battery saver based on a percentage and turn it off when the phone is charged to 90% and above. You can also choose to turn off or turn on battery low reminders. Next up, Google is finally doing something about bloatware on Android. Yes, finally. So this is not live yet, but Android 14 has a hidden page called Apps Installed in the Background Spot by Michelle Rahman. And this is interesting. This page will list all the apps that the device manufacturer installs in the background and the apps listed here aren't required by a phone. It states that. Yeah, this is super useful and users should be able to uninstall these apps easily right from this option. I mean, there are phones that install a lot of apps during setup and in the background and this option should let us uninstall them. I just hope that Google does bring this option in the Android 14 stable version. A lot of Android skins have a feature where you can have two instances of the same app in case you want to use multiple accounts. Stock Android has had this feature missing, but that's changing. Android 14 is testing a new clone apps feature, which will basically let you clone apps. No third party apps or work profile required. As you can see in these screenshots, there's a new clone apps option in the apps page in settings where you will be able to clone apps. Yeah, this should be great for people who have two Snapchat accounts or two Facebook accounts. You get the idea. See, right now when an app asks for permissions for photos and videos, you only get these two options, allow and don't allow. On iPhones, you get the option to only share selected photos with the app and that's what Android 14 is bringing. Android 14 will bring a new option in this permission prompt that will let you select photos and only they will be shared with the app. The guest account feature in Android is very, very useful and the good thing is it's getting slightly better in Android 14. See, in the user account settings of Android 14, there's a new option under guest account settings called allow guest to use phone. This was present in Android 13 too, but now it's here in the front and with this, you'll be able to turn it off and hide your call logs from the guest user. So for people who don't know, Health Connect is an app by Google to sync fitness data from different apps. Yeah, be it Samsung Health, Google Fit, Fitbit, etc. And this has been in beta for quite some time. But the interesting thing is, Health Connect is now integrated right into Android 14. In Android 14, you can just go to Settings, Security and Privacy, Privacy, and here you will find Health Connect. Yeah, weirdly buried in the settings. Now this will basically let you manage fitness data from different apps, see what apps are using data, and even block apps you don't want. There are a lot more minor changes in Android 14. For example, Android 14 brings a new predictive back gesture, which will basically give you a glimpse of where you're going with the back gesture so you don't accidentally exit an app. Next, users can now scale phone sizes to up to 200% in Android 14 versus 130% in Android 13. Yeah, this should be great for elders and people with eyesight issues. And apart from this, Android 14 has a new fast pair option in connection preferences. Also, when using dual SIMs, the phone will automatically use data from the SIM with the best connection. It's also bringing an option to convert your physical eSIM to eSIM directly from your phone. See, overall, the first developer preview of Android 14 is obviously aimed a lot at developers, so there aren't a lot of user-facing features and changes. But I am honestly excited about the Bloatware Finder feature. If it does arrive in Android 14, it could be a game changer. But I want to know from you, what do you guys want in Android 14? Comment down below and subscribe if you like this video.